It's a cherry Monday to you guys. Welcome to your favorite live Facebook program, The Game Plan. My name is Godfred Akwato Boafo. We're live on pulse.com.gh, Pulse Sports Facebook. And we're also live on a lot of our various social media channels. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on any social media channel that there is. Snapchat, we are on it. Okay, so lots and lots to talk about because it's been a pretty eventful sporting weekend plus a sporting day today. Big news coming in from Bahrain where, you know, the Ghana Football Association and its executive members are away attending FIFA Congress. We'll be telling you what's happening. They'll talk about Kumasi Asante Kotoko and an exclusive interview with Herbert Mensah, former, former chairman of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. I told you, we do it all on the game plan. So that will be coming your way. Uh, Michael Essien is in the news. Charlie, it's a loaded show. Okay, where do I start from? C C C C Nanako. Which one will give you which, which one like can we engage with the most? All right, let's start with Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Okay. Now, over the weekend, Kumasi Asante Kotoko in a bid to end their seven game winless streak. Or is it eight games? Yeah, eight game winless streak came to Accra to play Accra Great Olympics. Did not end too well. Kotoko lost by two goals to zero, and their fans are far from happy, and deservedly so. Now, the big news, though, was the departure of Kotoko's executive chairman, Dr. Kwame Che, from the stadium. Now, as soon as <laughs> Francis Achu scored the second goal in the 78th minute, Dr. Kwame Che walked out of the stadium. Kwame Che, who should stay? You, the chairman, you left. You want who to stay and watch the game. But I spoke to a couple of senior management members and they said he really was upset because he does not really know what else to do. Kotoko players are paid on time. Investigations I did indicate that Kotoko players are paid on the 26th of every month. Kotoko salaries are paid. Every player's signing on bonus has been paid, completely dealt with. Match day bonuses are handed over to the operations manager even before the games are played. So when it is about motivation, it is not a problem with Kumasi Asante Kotoko. In fact, I am reliably informed that before the game against Accra Great Olympics, Alaji Lamini, one of Kotoko's you know uh, followers, he's also been a part of their management previously went into the dressing room and gave the team $2,000. $2,000 as, as incentive to beat Accra Great Olympics. Obviously, it did not work. Kotoko lost the game. And the question has been asked, okay, so we've changed coaches, we've changed management. Perhaps it's time to look at the playing body. And I agree, the team is not playing too well. Based purely on what I saw at the stadium uh, against Accra Great Olympics, the Kotoko players, and I've been saying this for a while, are just not up to it. I saw Michael Kufu doing his best. He was horrible. Awa Mohammed, horrible. Even the, a player I, I, I like, to fall from Paul, the coach's son, wasn't too good on the day. The strikers are not scoring. Jackson Uzu came. Obedo Uzu came and did his best. Prince Aqua. Look, nothing is working for Kumasi Asante Kotoko at the moment. And I think the players need to call a meeting amongst themselves. Sit down and then ask. What can we do differently? How do we motivate ourselves? And, you know, I, I have a plan for Kotoko. They need to get Amos Frimpong back on the pitch. Now, Amos Frimpong got injured against Adriana Stars. I hear he started training. And the reason why I'm saying this is simple. Amos Frimpong is the captain of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. He's not the most talented player I've seen play for Kumasi Asante Kotoko. He will not go down as one of the greatest players of Kotoko. He will not go down as one of the greatest captains of Kotoko. But he will go down as one of the fiercest warriors of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. And some of the lame performances that Kotoko have been putting up, I tell you, will not happen if Amos Frimpong is on the football pitch. And Amos Frimpong has missed large chunks of the season. Now, if you recall, first game of the season against Liberty, he broke his wrist and was injured for six weeks. He returned two weeks after his return. He injured his leg in that league game against Adriana as well. So it's, it's been that kind of season. So Kumasi Asante Kotoko really, 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 and by this I mean the playing body, need to take a good hard look at themselves. But that is not to say that others do not have anything to say about what is going on in Kumasi Asante Kotoko. And Pulse and the game plan caught up with one of the most popular men 
to ever lead Kumase Asante Kotoko. Mr. Herbert Mensah in Kumase. And this is what he had to say regarding the current situation at Kotoko. I left Kotoko a long time ago. And I gave my word that I will not speak against Kotoko. That's why I don't talk. You heard me use words today about the truth. I am the only past chairman of Kumase Asante Kotoko. He has a special relationship with the two. The only one. Some may have become chiefs, that's irrelevant. The only past one who has the honor to be honored by a two, to be able to walk to nation. And I respect that and I honor it. So I love the two. So I don't. There are different management styles. I have my own, which is unique. So it's not for me to criticize other people. Others come. Others do. When I was at Kotoko, I used to say that Kotoko is greater than any human being. Chairman come, Chairman go. Kotoko will be there forever. Maybe they're going through a difficult point now. It is up to the current chairman, I've never met him, to look into his glass ball and decide how he's going to get Kotoko out. Because Kotoko is not just about winning. Kotoko is about the ability to hold the flame, that flame that burns your heart. And for the people of Asantiman, the people of Ghana, to see that you are fearless and prepared to hold that flame, then they will fail. Then they will be with you. Kotoko without supporters is not Kotoko. Barcelona in an empty stadium is not Barcelona. The Kotoko will never win. If you love the club, continue loving it. Current custodians, they chose to accept it when they were offered it. So they must now do the right thing and honor to the Okay, so interesting comments from Herbert Ado, from sorry, from Herbert Mess. What do you think? He says he is the special one. He is the only former Kotoko chairman who has a special relationship with the Asante Hene. Is he really sure? Sylvester is the Banta Mahene. You forget. So Besta is also a former Kotoko chairman. But that is Herbert. And he says he's not really willing to talk bad about any manager. Everybody has their own style. But perhaps Kwame Chie needs to look at himself. And I've said it again on this show. That it is time perhaps Kwame Chie looks at the people who surround him. The people who offer him advice. Are they the right kind of people to have around you when you are managing Kumasi as Ante Kotoko? When he's not around who does the day-to-day -day of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Perhaps once that is done on the management level, they'll be able to focus on the team as well. Okay? Now, I'm going to leave you with an exclusive on Kumasi Asante Kotoko. They are going to sign Steve Polak as their head coach. And this is live. I'm, this is like live. I'm telling you this now. Kumasi Asante Kotoko will sign Steve Polak, who is the current head coach of Brickham Chelsea, as their head coach. Take it from me. I'm telling you this. Steve Pollack, current coach of Brickham Chelsea, will be named Kumasi Asante Kotoko coach after the first round to replace the interim coach from Paul Manso. And I don't want to say I told you so, but can you guys play back what I said on the game plan regarding from Paul Manso? Play it back. Like, play back. I want to hear. Play back. Am I convinced by it? Not too much. I'm not really convinced by Frimpong Manso. He's somebody I know for a very long time, like going on eight, nine years on a personal level. Nice guy. But nice doesn't win you games, you know? And Kotoko don't need a nice guy at the moment. He's an ex-legend of the club and all, but again, that's not what they need. They need some technical and tactical astuteness. As to whether he will provide it, time will tell. But his record is not the prettiest. From the national under 17 team, he didn't do too well. BA United didn't do too well. Went to Karela, had a lot of resources at his disposal. Again, he didn't do too well. Now he's been handed the reins of Kuma Santa Kotoko, at least in the interim until a coach is appointed. I don't know how that's going to work. So for me, I'm not really, really enthused by this decision. But hey, Kotoko, you and your team, you're doing what you want to do. Lightweight, I said that. Could not coach BA, could not coach Karela. You guys did not agree with me. I read the comment, some of you insulted me and all. Here we are. Was Frimpong Manso able to coach Kumasi Asante Kotoko? No. 
So sometimes you have to listen to the game plan because we have the master plan. Okay, moving on from that one, fantastic news coming in today. You know, FIFA Congress is currently ongoing in Bahrain. Huge issues to discuss. But what emerged from there was that at CAF's executive committee meeting, though, agreement, Kusinya Techi, Ghana Football Association president, has been named as the first vice president of the Confederation of African Football. Second vice president is the president of the Democratic Republic of Congo's FA, Constance Omari. He has been named second vice president. So Ahmad Ahmad is naming his allies. Now, these two were his chief campaign managers, Constant Omari and Kusin Yantechi, during the campaign to oust Isa Hayatu. And he has amply rewarded these gentlemen with the, five, with the first and second vice president. So, good one there for Ghana football. Congratulations to Mr. Kusin Yantechi. Let's see what you can do there. So, fantastic, fantastic news there for Ghana football. And moving on, my final tip on the Ghana Premier League and wrap up, and then I move on to other issues. Of course, I have to talk about Samuel Safo. Why should I not talk about Samuel Safo? Six goals from centre back, the general captain of Liberty Professionals. He was on the game plan three weeks ago to tell us that he was not interested in the personal goal scoring accolades. He wanted the team to win, blah, blah, blah. But I must admit, Samuel Safo is. Perhaps the most informed Ghanaian defender on the local scene at the moment. The Kotoko guys have the names, Omeshi, you know. But Samosafu has scored six goals, and all of them from set place. <laughs> Congratulations, Samosafu. Let's hope he keeps it up. It, you know, it's taking time for Samosafu to come into his own. He's not a novice on the local league. He's been around for a pretty long time. But this season, things seem to have come full head for him scoring goals. And let's hope he keeps it up uh, to help his team, Liberty professionals okay so mother's day is coming like I, I just can't wait i have a huge surprise for my mom and i hope you do too but like i keep telling you pulse is giving you the opportunity to reward your mom to win fantastic prizes for your mom courtesy of onga okay so we are giving away all these products and all you simply have to do is send us a photo or a video of your something your mother likes to do and you are the one doing the impersonation so do it like mama okay take a photo of yourself dressed like your mama dancing like your mama eating like your mama cooking like your mama that is all we want and send it to us on any of our social media channels especially on facebook send us the photo on twitter send us a photo or video and you could be one of 10 winners of products from onga for your mom come mother's day now don't let this opportunity go by reward your mom we all love our moms, don't we? Okay, so moving on from there, we have to talk about Kevin Prince Boating. Because Kevin Prince Boating has waded into the whole racism issue regarding Sule Muntai. Well, we all heard the good news, ban rescinded, blah, blah, blah. But Kevin Prince Boating granted an interview over the weekend, and this is what he had to say about Sule Muntai's actions on the day. People always ask me, would you do it again? It was just a friendly game, whatever. But... Uh... I think I changed it a little bit, you know, in the moment. Now it's all the same, no one cares, you know, it's finished. Like, this is how the world is. You do something for a week is important and then the next week is not important. But uh, if it would happen, of course, I would first maybe, because it's not right to just walk off the pitch, I would speak to the referee or whatever. But uh, if it would not stop, because there it was 25 minutes, I would just stop playing. So it looks like Kevin Prince Boating, even though he supports Sule Muntari, you know, held a bit of a different view as to how he would have proceeded if he had been in that situation. Do you agree with him? What do you make of the situation? I leave it up to you. I'm not going to talk too much about that. Okay, congratulations also to Christian Achu. Hey, they won the championship Newcastle United on the final day of the league. Now, Brighton and Hove Albion. Ah, oh, come on. You guys choked. Now, Newcastle won the league on the pitch. Like on the last day, they had... They, they beat Barnsley by three goals to zero. They were waiting for... They needed either Brighton and Hove Albion to draw or to lose to confirm them as winners. And that is exactly what happened. A last-minute goal from Jack Grealish meant that Aston Villa f did not become the coronation kings for Brighton and Hove Albion, but they became the coronation kings for Newcastle United. And boy, it was party time. And it was great to see Christian Ochoa on the pitch with his wife, his lovely wife, uh, Marie-Claire Rupio. Uh, she's the woman who manages Christiana Chu. She's a, she's, I think she's done a fantastic job on Christiana Chu. And their son, Joshua, uh, they were on the pitch. It was fantastic, right? Like nice, nice pictures, as you can see. And like we all say, we are keeping our fingers crossed that Rafa Benitez, and I told you this before, Rafa Benitez has said that he is going to get rid of 80% of the team 
that qualified for the Premier League. But we are hoping that 80% does not include Christian Achu. So let's keep our fingers crossed in that particular regard for Christian Achu. Michael Essien scored his second goal since going to Indonesia as his team, Persib Badung, went top of the Indonesian League. Hey, Michael Essien, I call you. It looks like my, my producer says Michael Essien is not finished. <laughs> what do you think? Well, he's in Indonesia and I think he's achieving the aim for which he was brought in. Uh, records show that attendances have improved at games that Michael Asian has played and numbers are really, really high. So it looks like um, the objective of bringing him in to raise interest in the Indonesian league is working. And he's playing well as well, which is always important. If he were there just to take the money, that would be problematic. But Michael Asian is playing really, really well for uh, Percy Badung. So, hey, let's hope he keeps it up. We are not inviting him to the Black Stars again. Now and there, it's long gone, but we'll still talk about Michael Asian when these things come on. Now, another player in the spotlight, and so much happened over the weekend. I'm just, like, I'm really, really elated. But this one was not really good news. Efri Aqua, he's been in fantastic form. For those of you who have not been paying attention, I think that, you know, before the AFCON, we were saying, yeah, Thomas Party was in form, but Efri Aqua has been in fantastic form. Let's be honest about it. He's been playing really well. And in the room of Turin, uh, sorry, in the derby of Turin, Italy, Casadino, in the derby of Turin, that is the league game between Juventus and Torino. That game ended 1 1. A free Aqua got red carded for this tackle. É o segundo cartão amarelo para o Ganes Aqua. E vê o vermelho. E os jogadores do Torino colocam-se ali. I don't agree. No! He won the ball. Like, he, had, he was on a second yellow card. He was on a yellow card already. So he should have been more careful. But he won the ball. Like, I don't really understand why he got sent off for that. And his general manager, Antonio Comi, also said the referee got the decision wrong. And his manager, that is the coach of the team, Sinisa Mihailovic, took it an extra step. Watch this. He almost beat up the referee. A rodear o árbitro, Paolo Valeri. Está de cabeça perdida também. Sinisa Mihailovic. Expulsão de Aqua. E está Mihailovic. Reclamar com o árbitro da partida e também ele recebe ordens. Oh, Sinisa Mihailovic, come on! Like he was that pissed off, and like his comments after the game were ridiculous. He was like, Look, this referee doesn't know what he's doing. That was a fantastic tackle. The players, the uh, Manduchkic was faking the pain and whatnot. Like he was all over the place. But what do you think? But congratulations to a free Yaku, even though he got sent off. I am congratulating the good form that he has been in in recent times. Keep it up, and hopefully, you can bring that form to the camp of Ghana. Okay, so we are nearing the end of the show. And I'm um, talking about rugby to wrap up rugby. Now, over the weekend, uh, Ghana won the Rugby Africa Regional Challenge uh, for, group Af uh, for Group West Africa. And Ghana's Eagles, that's the name of our rugby team, Ghana's Eagles defeated Togo by 10 points to zero at the Accra Sports Stadium. Now, they had defeated uh, Benin by 45 points to 6 in their previous game. Now, uh, the Ghana Rugby Federation, we all know, headed by Mr. Herbert Mensah, whose interview we played earlier on, are coached by uh, Lovemore Kuzorira and captained by Michael Akun Wilson. So, congratulations to them. It looks like Ghana is improving bit and bit in rugby. A couple of years ago, we, we, we seemed to be getting it right, then we gave it up. And I've expressed a personal opinion when it comes to rugby. I think we should focus on sevens. You know, rugby sevens instead of the fifteens. Fifteens is more expensive. It takes a lot more technical know-how, which we don't have. And for the beginners, it's always good to play sevens. Even a, a country as powerful as Fiji, traditionally a powerhouse in rugby, they don't focus on fifteens. They play sevens. It's only recently that they've decided to, you know, get involved in fifteens. How much more we Ghana and West Africa want to play fifteens? Kenya for instance, have made huge strides in, in rugby sevens. In fact, they've won a couple of World Series uh, competitions and have become one of the best sevens nations in the world. So perhaps it's something we could look into. Instead of focusing on the 15s, let's focus on the sevens. Okay, so that's a wrap 
for the game plan. My name is Godfrey Akuto Boafo. I know that you've had an awesome start to the week. It's good to be with you. I will catch you guys next week. Don't forget to keep reading pulse.com.gh. Have a good night.